Red November is a delightfully silly cooperative game from Fantasy Flight Games and designer Bruno Faiduti. In Red November, players are gnomes that are trapped on an experimental submarine that isn't doing very well, so the plan is to stay alive until they can be rescued. Now, this entertains three to eight players and takes one to two hours. So each player starts Red November with a player card, a gnome figure, and a timekeeper. The timekeeper starts at a point on the time track that's determined by the number of players, while the gnome goes in a random room, which you determine by rolling a ten-sided die. Next, the three disaster tokens are placed at the beginning of each of their tracks. Six grog cards are placed in the captain's quarters, and the rest of the items are placed in a face-down deck beside the board along with the event cards and any other tokens. Finally, each gnome gets two item cards for their hand, and the game begins. So Red November is all about time. To win, each player's timekeeper has to make it to that final rescued space on the time track before the ship is destroyed. Now everybody's going to fail if one of the disaster tokens makes it to the end of its track, if every gnome dies, or if you fail to prevent one of the timed destruction events. The player whose timekeeper is furthest back on the time track gets the next turn. If two players are on the same square, then the topmost token goes first. Each turn has four phases. Movement, action, the feint check, and updates. So the time you take to move and to act during your turn is tracked by the white ghost timekeeper. In order to move into a room, you have to open a hatch, which takes a minute. Moving across the room doesn't take any extra time unless it's flooded to low water, in which case it's going to take another minute. Opening a hatch into a flooded room is also going to make the room that you're standing in flood as well. If a gnome is in a room that's flooded to a low level, they cannot open a hatch into a room with high water. Also, a gnome can't enter a room that's on fire unless they have a fire extinguisher or if they drink grog. A gnome can move through as many rooms as they would like on their turn. Next, a player is going to take one action, and there's three different types of these. Fix-it actions, item actions, and special actions. So fix-it actions can remove a fire, flood, or blocked hatch marker, or they can reset one of the disaster tracks and maybe prevent a timed event. In order to take an action, a player is going to decide how many minutes to spend on it and move the ghost timekeeper forward that amount. They can then discard any items for their bonuses. Finally, you're going to roll the die. If the result is equal to or less than the total amount of minutes spent plus bonuses, then the action succeeds. A gnome in the equipment stores or in the captain's cabin can draw items at one minute per item. Also, two gnomes in the same room together can spend one minute exchanging as many items as they would like. So preventing certain timed events is going to take a special action. A gnome in the missile room can prevent a missile launch, while a gnome that has the aqualung can leave the ship in order to fight the kraken. If your gnome finishes their action phase in a room that's on fire or a room that's flooded to high water, then they die. Their token is removed from the board and their player is eliminated. After their action, a player that has drunk grog on their turn needs to make a faint check. So for every bottle of grog that a gnome drinks, their intoxication level goes up by one. To make a faint check, they draw the top card of the event deck. There's a number in the bottom right. If that number is greater than the gnome's intoxication level, then they pass their faint check. If they fail their faint check, though, then their timekeeper is moved forward ten spaces on the track. That means they're unconscious for 10 minutes, and they're at great risk of flooding and fire. Finally, it's time for updates. So the active player moves their own timekeeper in order to catch up to the ghost timekeeper. And every time they land on a space that's got a star in it, they'll draw an event card. Now, these events are going to cause a fire or flood or blocked hatch to appear in a random room. They might cause one of the disaster tracks to advance, or they might trigger a timed event. And timed event marker is placed a set number of spaces forward on the track from the moment it was triggered, and it has to be resolved before every player's timekeeper has gone past its space. If all of the players make it to the end of the time track, then the game is won. Any other eventuality means that the game is lost. In the last 10 spaces of the game, one of the gnomes, if they have an aqualung, can attempt to escape the submarine and swim to safety. In this case, that player gets a different result in the game than everyone else. So if everyone else loses, that player wins, and vice versa. 
So I always have a great time playing Red November, and I think it's largely on account of its theme. It's really well executed, and it makes a game that would be really kind of grim and horrible really funny and entertaining because you're playing these inexplicably Soviet gnomes and all of this ridiculous stuff is happening, and it's just really quite a lot of fun. It also has some very unique game mechanics that keep it from being just a standard co-op. Both the timekeepers and that kind of abandoned ship option at the end add a lot of real interest to the game. Now, that timekeeper mechanic, because it's so unique, is something that might take people a little bit of time to get used to. It feels trickier and more complicated than it actually is, and, and once you get past that, you start to really get into the flow of the game. Another con that some people may see in this game is the fact that it is very random. So if you're the kind of player who really likes high strategy and planning many, many turns ahead, then this game probably isn't for you. Uh, the randomness is part of that theme and it definitely, it definitely is pervasive throughout this entire game. A great pro for this game, though, that I see is that it's a cooperative game that's very hard to win. I really love that about cooperative games. You really have to talk to each other, you really have to plan, and if you win, it feels like a great achievement. On the other hand, if you lose, it's still a lot of fun. There's a lot of great stuff going on in this game, and it's really funny. So even if, at the end of it all, the Kraken rips your ship apart, it doesn't matter, you still had a really good time playing.